the tree up. I want to see. Can I put the ornaments on? I love getting ready for Christmas. I love the Christmas trees and ornaments and presents and cookies and candy canes. I love all those things too. The house looks so cheerful when the house is decorated, but right now it's time for bed. And tomorrow we'll decorate with all these things. Aww. I don't want to go to bed. Just a few more minutes, please. It's time for bed and sweet dreams. Mom, why do we put ornaments on the tree and why do we have candy canes at Christmas and not the 4th of July? Well, when I was little, I went to church with my mom and dad. I remember that after Thanksgiving, we talked a lot about getting ready for Christmas Day and remembering that Jesus was born on Christmas Day. That's kind of like remembering someone's birthday. Having Christmas is like having a birthday celebration for someone. You do things to remember the person and feel happy they were born. But I don't know why we put a tree inside our house and have ornaments and candy canes. Everything sure is pretty though. Now off to bed and tomorrow we'll decorate. Glory to God in the highest. Who are you? We are the angels of the Lord. You have many questions about Christmas, and we have come to answer them. I didn't order an angel on the internet for Christmas. <laughs> angels and the story of Christmas are way more timeless than the internet. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. Wait, where did you come from? We have come to you in your dreams so that you can learn about the story of Christmas and know that you are, there are things all around you right here in this house that can remind you of God's love. Okay, I'm ready. Hang on. I'm lying. Emma. Emma, lying. Emma, these are angels who are going to tell us... <gasps> tell us about Christmas. Okay, now we're ready. First, we'll tell you the story of Christmas. Mary was a teenager living in a village called Nazareth. Mary was engaged to Joseph, who was a carpenter. One day, God sent an angel to visit Mary. When the angel came to visit Mary, Mary felt very confused and afraid. Even though she was very afraid, Mary listened to the angel who told her that she would have a baby and name him Jesus. Mary didn't understand how this could happen, but the angel explained that the child we would be God's own son and that nothing is impossible with God. Mary felt amazed and she believed the angel. Mary told Joseph that a miracle had happened. She was going to have a baby. Because Joseph wasn't the father of the baby, he told Mary that they could not get married. But when the, Joseph went to the sleep, God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream to let him know that Mary, what Mary had told him was right. And God wanted Mary and Joseph to marry. The jo angel explained to the child was God's son, that his name would be Jesus and that he was the Messiah. When Joseph woke up, he did as God wanted. Right at that time, the emperor, a kind of king, decided to take a census, which is a way that a government counts all of the people in a country. Because of this census, everybody had to go to their hometown, where they could register for the census. Since Joseph was a descendant of David, Mary and Joseph had to go to a town named Bethlehem. There were lots of people in Bethlehem because of the census. So there weren't enough places to stay, so Mary and Joseph stayed in the stable because the inn was overcrowded. While they were at the stable, Jesus was born. Mary wrapped the baby in cloth and placed him in a manger. Nearby there was a field, and in that field there were shepherds who were taking care of sheep. An angel came and spoke with the shepherds, telling them that the Savior of the world had been born. 
The shepherds were very afraid, but the angel told them not to be. The shepherds decided to go see the baby. They hurried to the town of Bethlehem, found Mary, Joseph, and the baby. They were very excited and shared the, new, the news with everyone they saw that the Messiah had been born. They said lots of thanks to God. There were some other men known as the Magi who lived in the east of the country that Mary and Joseph lived in. The Magi saw the great star and knew that it meant the birth of the king of the Jews. And they wanted to worship the Messiah, so they traveled a long way. They stopped in, in Jerusalem and met with the local king whose name was Herod. They asked where the baby had been born. The Magi were told that the baby had been born in Bethlehem. Herod told the Magi that he too wanted to worship the baby and asked the Magi to report back after they found the child. But actually Herod was very jealous of the baby and lied to the Magi. Really, Herod wanted to kill baby Jesus. The Magi continued to Bethlehem and found Jesus. The Magi bowed down and worshipped Jesus. They gave him presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Before leaving Bethlehem, they were warned in a dream of Herod. Herod's true intentions to kill baby Jesus. So they made sure they went home a different way than they came before to avoid Jerusalem to protect baby Jesus and not letting Herod know where Jesus was. That's an awesome story, but I don't see what Jesus has to do with all the stuff in, that's in the house right now. We have a tree and we're going to decorate it. And we made cookies too. See, I have one right here my mom doesn't know about. <laughs> you put up a tree, right? Yes, it's right there. Okay, the kind of trees that are used for Christmas trees are evergreens. They are evergreen, always green. Other trees lose their leaves in the fall, and evergreen tree stays green all year long. The evergreen is used at Christmas time because it represents eternal life with Jesus Christ and the needles always point up, reminding us of heaven. The needles do point up, but maybe this angel's onto something. Okay, that's the tree, but what about what we put on the tree? Oh, you mean the ornaments? Hey, those are ornaments. Ornament, the ornaments are lovely, aren't they? Ornaments can symbolize the blessings in our lives. Our lives wouldn't be complete without God's blessing. Everything that we have is due to God loving us so much that he wants to shower us with his blessings. Just as ornaments are all different shapes and sizes, blessings are, as, are all different as well. God places and chooses Jesus' blessing for us so that it will be just wise. If we have so many ornaments, why do we put lights on the tree, and why are there so many candles at Christmas time? Now there are lights here. Lights and candles are used to give light. When a room is filled with darkness, it is dark. But if you light a single match in a dark room, the room is light. There may be more darkness, but the light overpowers it. We are that light. Jesus wants to remind us that light takes away darkness. We can be the single light in a world of darkness. We must share, we must share our light with the world so that light increases. That's really special.
I hear jingle bells. Do you hear them? Yes, I hear the bells. Bells ring out to guide lost sheep back to the fold. It tells us that all are precious in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus is our shepherd, and he laid down his life for us so that we may spend eternity with him in heaven. He is calling us to follow him through on his word. Jesus wants us to follow him. If I'm lost, Jesus will look for me. Candy canes at Christmas too. Why do we have candy canes? The candy canes have many symbols. The red represents the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. The white represents the purity of Jesus. Some candy canes have three small red stripes running through the candy. These stripes remind us of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you hold the candy cane upright, it looks like a shepherd's crook. If you hold the candy cane upside down, it looks like a J for Jesus. Angels came to share the good news about Jesus with us, and we want to share the good news with everyone else. They're coming. Guys, get back into position. Leave it. Let me have it. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Emma. Turn your back on. Josh, you have yours on? Turn it on. Yours on? My name is on
We're waiting for our star. <laughs> what about stars? I see lots of stars around at Christmas time. Why is that? There's a star. <laughs> we have his word as a dying light. The star reminds us of a shining hope for all people ages ago. The star fulfilled a prophecy. Traveling many miles, the Magi followed the star in the sky, and it led them to baby Jesus. The star was their guiding light to the Savior. God was the Magi's travel agent of sorts, leading them to the greatest destination ever known, the Savior. It sounds like an amazing journey. I help, put, I help my friends put up their tree. They put lots of ornament angels on the tree and on their table. They put a big angel. It, the angel kind of looks like you. Imagine you're a young person out in the field. Your job is to stay with the sheep while all the important people are in the town. This night doesn't seem any different than any other night. The, uh, the, there are sheep sounds, but otherwise it's quiet, and suddenly angels are above you. I'm afraid. The shepherds were too. It's okay. You can take the blanket off your head. Why did the come to but why did the angels come to the shepherds? Wouldn't it have worked better? Wouldn't it have worked better to go to the important people in town and tell them? Yeah, then those people could have let the other people know. I bet the poor people would have been afraid. The message that God had about the birth of Jesus was for all people, not just for the right ones, not just for the important ones. It was for everyone. In those days, people thought of the shepherds as the lowest people. They were usually dirty, smelly, poor. But... God chose his number one messenger to tell the shepherds of his son's birth. God looks at the heart, not what the world looks at. I like that sometimes I think no one likes me because I don't have nice clothes like everyone else. Hold up. Does that mean Jesus came for me too? Yes, that's what it means. OMG, thank goodness God loves me that much. That much. Oh, wait, what about this stuff? My mom always puts it on the table. It looks real nice, but I don't know why it's there. The holly leaves represent the crown of thorns that were placed upon Jesus' head. As he was being crucified, the berries symbolized the blood that he shed for us. He endured criticism and excruciating pain embarrassment all for you and me. You Next time you see a decoration with holly on it, remember what was done for you so you could, so you that could spend eternity with you. He went through all that for us? Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> when, we bought, when we bought our Christmas tree, we got a wreath too. Why are wreaths at Christmas time? There's no end to this thing. <laughs> the wreath has its evergreen branch branches bent in a circle so that the ends touch, having no beginning or end, just as there is no beginning or end of Jesus' eternal love for us. Just as the wreath looks the same throughout the season and seems not to change, he too will always be the same. I like that reminder. Even though we grow and change, he'll always be the same and we'll always be right there. Now, what about the presents? They can't have a meaning. It does seem the world has forgotten about 
the reason of Christmas. Most people seem that to think that getting presents is the greatest thing about Christmas, and others think that presents have nothing to do with Christmas. Well, they are both wrong. The Magi came to visit Jesus as a young child and gave him presents. But Jesus, as king, they offered him gold, paying him tribute. As a child of God, they offered him frankincense, for God is honored with the smoke of incense. As a man that would die, they offered him myrrh, because myrrh is used in embalming the dead. The Magi saw this child and knew that he was a king, and they came to worship him. But Jesus got presents, right? I love getting presents. Shh! Jesus is the greatest present of all! We have a gold crisis. (laughs) (coughs) What about the wrapping? That's just something we came up with, right? I never heard of gold, frankincense, and myrrh being wrapped up. You're right that the Magi's gifts were not wrapped up with bows and ribbons and wrapping paper like we have, but for us, bows and ribbons can have a special meaning. Many people spend lots of time wrapping their presents during Christmas time, using bows and ribbons to make their presents beautiful. What they don't realize is that bows and ribbons on the outside can represent something better than toys or clothes wrapped up inside. The bow ties are a present with a beautiful ribbon. Just as Jesus ties us as Christians together in his love. We may not be in the same family, but... We all come in God! So they are all the family of God. <laughs> I just thought wrappings were to hide the present inside. I never thought they had, I never thought about them having a meaning of their own. It's important to slow down at Christmas and enjoy every moment by remembering the true meaning of Christmas. People can sometimes really get focused on the stuff of Christmas. The parties, the gift wrapping, making cookies. Cookies, angels, I know there's not me in a cookie. Well, you'll be surprised then. Lots of families make cookies at Christmas time. Cookie cutters can be used to be, turn ordinary dough into a masterpiece. Thank you. God doesn't use cookie cutters when he Great each one of us. He makes every one of us so special and unique that he would have to break the mold after just one use. He is the potter and we are his clay. God loves us and he wants to mold us into his masterpieces. We only need to be moldable and willing to follow his lead. Now sleep children in, in the morning. Did you know that all the stuff at Christmas means that God loves us? Did you know God sent Jesus to be with us? Did you know that light on a tree can remind us we are light for God? I want to learn more about Jesus. Can we go to church on Sunday? I think it might be Advent or something. I don't know what Advent is, but I really want to learn. 
Yes, I think we can. Let's go have a cookie and talk about it. Have a cookie, everyone. Have a cookie. Oh, let's go start passing. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Back over there, please. A bit of excitement about what's coming. <laughs> We call Jesus Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is the fulfillment of the promise of God will always be with us. The gift of a cookie that we give to you is a reminder as you go home today of God's promise. Find your teacher, please. Simple. We give you a cookie, we sip on the party, you eat. Josh? Ryan Haley, excellent job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Children, please return with your teachers to your classrooms. <laughs>